I want to show you a technique that I use personally to create a master project. Now, in my opinion, what I'm about to show you, I think, is the fastest way to create a master project for a particular situation when you want the master project to be temporary. For example, maybe what you want to do is you want to open, let's say, six projects, and you need to set cross-project dependencies. Or you want to open four projects, and you want to analyze resource allocation and over-allocation across the group. But you don't really want to save the master. You just want it to be temporary. And then here's the deal. And when you get done working with the temporary master project, you want the projects that you were just working with to be there in case you want to save changes or whatever. So in my opinion, here is the best way to create a master project. Well, what you do is you open the projects that you want to appear in the master. So I've got three projects. They're called Component 1. And they're tied to a shared resource pool file because I'm not working with Project Server. And I'll open Component 2, which is also connected to the shared resource pool file. And I'll open Component 3. There we go. I've got the three projects open. And I want these three projects to become part of a temporary master project. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the trick. You go to the View tab, and on the View ribbon, far right end, is a button called New Window. Now, you're probably thinking, wait a minute, New Window? No, 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 I'm looking for Master Project. But folks, when you click New Window, Microsoft Project will show you all the projects that you have currently open. And here's the trick. You select the ones you want to be in the master. You pick the view that you want to see. In this case, I want to see the regular old Gantt chart view. And then you click OK. And boom, ladies and gentlemen, I just created a master project using the new window dialog. Who would have thought of that? Now, the thing that's really nice about, about working with the temporary master is you can do anything you need to do. You can set cross-project links. You can analyze resource allocation and resource over-allocations. You can level across the projects. All of those are capabilities. Well, while I'm here, here's what I'd like to do. The way that our projects are going to flow, we're actually creating a new product of some kind. And the product will consist of three different components that we have to build. Now, the way the work is going to happen across the projects is we'll do the design task from phase one in the first project. And then we'll start the design task in the second component project. So I'm going to go ahead and link those. And then the way the work will flow further, when we get the design task done for phase one in the second component project, then we will do the design task in the third project. So let me go ahead and link these as well. There we go. There's the workflow across the three projects. Now you can see. I've got a nightmare going on. The Burning Man or the red stick figure indicators tell me I've got resource over allocations. But the nice thing is I've got a temporary master. So once you're done with any analysis or changes that you want to make in the temporary master, folks, this is going to blow you away. You just close the master, and you don't save the changes. So watch this, everybody. I'm going to click my Close button. That's going to ask me, do you want to save the changes made to Project 2? That's my temporary master. I'm going to say no. Now, I'm not going to lose anything, because here's why. The original projects that you just had open, they're still open. So you can continue working with them if you need to. Folks, here's the uh, Component 3 project. Look at this. That's uh, that gray Gantt bar and the gray task over here. Those are called external tasks, but their nickname is a ghost task. 
The reason is most people are so scared the first time they see them. Oh, it looks like a ghost. Now, you know I'm just teasing. Well, folks, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to save the changes to component three, and I'll close it. And looky here, here's our component two project. I've, I've got even more external tasks. Look, there's the external predecessor. There's the external successor. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I'll update the resource pool with that information, and I'll close it. And then here's our component one project. Again, there's the uh, external task. I'll go ahead and save it and update it. And then I'll close it, and I'll close the shared resource pool file as well. So folks, that's a technique that I personally like to use in other situations that, you know, I, I don't want you thinking this is the only way to create a master project. But that's a favorite that, the favorite that I like because it gives you a temporary one that you can use and then just dispose of it and you still got your original files open. So, Kurt, that was my next tip. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, we had a question related to Project Server. If, are there any issues when working in Project Server? Um, in some, the, the answer is no. Uh, project Server uh, 2010, 2013 are able to handle master projects um, just fine. Um, you can actually save them in, in uh, those versions of Project Server. The company that I work with right now, however, does not allow project managers to save their master projects. Therefore, the method that I'm using works just fine at our company. So that was a good question. Appreciate bringing it up. Kirk, we have another one. Uh, why is it important to keep the master temporary? Couldn't you keep the view in addition to the individual projects? Um, well, here's the thing. The master project is actually a file. It's a real Microsoft project file. It's an MPP file. A master project is simply a container that holds the other projects in it, either temporarily or permanently. If you have the need to save the master, that's fine. I have no objection to that. But in my case, I didn't need to save it because I made my cross-project links. If I did need to keep it and work with it regularly, then I would probably save it. I'd probably save it. OK, I think that addressed some other people. I had a similar question about saving it. And then maybe oh, one, last, yeah. one last question here from Brian. Uh, can you see details of ghost tasks in component project? Um, yes. Um, oh, uh, um, the answer is no. You can see a little bit of information. Let me go ahead and get component two open here. Uh, what you will find out with ghost tasks is Microsoft Project will only show you limited information about those tasks if you're not in the master. For example, if I select the task design, which is uh, the ghost task, notice, and then I go to the split screen view so I could look at who's assigned to it, see, you can't see anything. It's only showing a little bit of information. You'll get things like duration, start and finish, but you won't get other things that would be relevant. For that, we would have to reopen the master to see all of the information. 